Hello, and welcome to Quick Charge by Electrek. I'm Mikey G, and it's Wednesday, January 18th. Tesla has increased the price of its home charging station by 20% after several price drops made it the cheapest option available. Tesla has been making fast moves to encourage the USA to adopt their plug as the North American standard. Aside from previously lowering the price, making it available from Best Buy, and opening up the intellectual property for any company to use freely, they even renamed the plug the North American Charging Standard. The Tesla wall connector was already cheap for a 48-amp system with level 2 home charging at $400, bucks, but Tesla again dropped the price to $350 back in December. So now the price has gone up to a total of $425 on their site and also Best Buy. We know that Tesla is having a massive surge in orders right now thanks to the recent price drop on vehicles. Presumably there's going to be a lot more chargers to purchase in the near horizon. So the move may be able to reconcile the rising costs or perhaps to quell demand to match production. There is also the idea that Tesla is just cashing in, but for $75, even per customer, it's not too much for one of the most wealthy automakers in the world to brag about. There's a lot of media reports about Tesla having staged or faked a self-driving video back in 2016 after a testimony of a Tesla autopilot executive was released. But Electrek takes a look at the full story, or rather, just the backstory. In 2016, Tesla announced that all of their vehicles going forward would be equipped with the hardware necessary to achieve full self-driving capability through software updates in the future. Of course, there was a few more caveats to that one to come in the future, but that's not really the scope of this story. At that time, Tesla released a video that showed a Model X driving by itself around the Bay Area for a few miles, navigating some stop signs and traffic lights before entering Tesla's parking lot. And now, some seven years later, as part of the discovery process for a trial that involves Elon Musk, Ashok Elmsway, the director of autopilot software at Tesla, confirmed that Tesla used 3D mapping on a predetermined route to create the video. He also said that Tesla did the run multiple times and that the test drivers intervened on several occasions. With this information being brought up now during a testimony, it sounds like a revealing admission. But the only problem is that Tesla watchers have already known this for years. The video itself opens with the title that reads, The person in the driver's seat is only here for legal reasons. He is not doing anything the car is driving itself. That itself gives very little backstory as to the development that had gone on prior. On another occasion in 2017, Tesla released a report to the California DMV that they had driven 550 autonomous miles with 168 disengagements, and all the miles were driven in the weeks leading up to the event in which the video was shown. Even though we take for granted Tesla's current self-driving technology, at the time, Tesla was not offering cars to the public with anything near the capabilities in the video. Tesla did not state or even imply that the video was made on a new street without prior input. At Electrek, we're left wondering why larger news outlets haven't noticed that the information is not new, or even that when put into the proper context of time, it's not really that scary or even misleading. Tesla has messed up on product announcements before, so it's not really out of the question, if you think about the Cybertruck, but in this case, we feel that Tesla was not really in much of a scary or compromised position for the information that came to light recently and a long time ago. Tesla and Audi are the first automakers to participate in the Global Battery Alliance's Battery Passport Proof of Concept. The Global Battery Alliance is pushing to establish what they call a sustainable value chain. The first step is trying to understand where the materials come from, which can actually be pretty tough. Tesla and Audi are the first to participate, with Tesla voluntarily reporting on their cobalt sourcing. BMW went a step further by also reporting on lithium. Unfortunately for BMW, this may not get them out of the sustainability hot seat. Climate activists across three different social awareness groups have banded together to post over 400 irreverent billboards across Europe to expose automakers targeting Toyota and BMW specifically for promoting zero-carbon electric vehicles and simultaneously lobbying to keep combustion vehicles on roads for decades to come. One of the live billboard replacements shows a cartoonish-styled hellish landscape of skulls and dead plants and animal life using a Toyota SUV as a centerpiece. It advertises, let's ruin everything. 
For BMW, the group shows a family of crash test dummies with a caption that states that BMW is testing emissions on you. With an expiry date on gas and diesel vehicles already in place for Europe and the UK starting in 2030, the activists are demanding an immediate end to advertising for combustion vehicles. This aim is similar to tobacco-style legislation enacted in America in the 1990s that ended advertising of potentially deadly smoking products. I still remember when I was a kid hearing about Joe Camel. He's not so cool anymore. Chinese automaker and conglomerate BYD has announced the sale of their EVs that will begin in the United Kingdom this quarter. Just this past summer, BYD shared plans to begin to meddle its EVs in the Japanese, Swedish, and German markets, then later announcing Norway, Denmark, the Netherlands, and Belgium. But now the automaker plans to begin sales in the home country of Pink Floyd. With the countries outlined in Europe and the expanding markets of a nice pair being Asia and Australia, and also recognizing the company's widening manufacturing footprint, it's hard to argue they have a recipe for success. According to Bloomberg NEF, BYD already overtook Tesla in global EV sales last year, but that's only if you count plug-in hybrids. At Electric, we don't. Nevertheless, barring a momentary lapse of reason from BYD, it seems the wall between the leader in global EV sales of Tesla and the echoes of the competition are drawing closer. We will be fearlessly watching the quarterly reports from Tesla, and of course, also BYD, to let you know the final cut. EV automaker NEO and world leader in battery manufacturing CATL held a signing ceremony in which the two companies committed to a five-year agreement to deepen an existing relationship. The aim is to improve EV battery supply chains, advance new EV technology, and expand to new markets. The signing ceremony was held in the city of Ningda in the southeast of Chinese Fujian province and was attended by NEO's senior vice president, Alan Zheng, and CATL Executive President of Passenger Vehicles, Wei Chu. And aside from me flexing my Chinese pronunciation, there really aren't a whole lot of details at the moment. Amperage Capital, an infrastructure investor, has launched a fund to accelerate EV charging deployment for apartment communities and residents. Amperage plans to raise money from investors, using the money to pay directly for installations. In addition to providing 100% of the long-term funds needed for deployment, Amperage offers a white-glove service that takes responsibility for the entire process, including management, design, construction, permits, and installation. Then, EV drivers living in the apartments can pay for a dedicated spot to charge, and the investors will presumably earn a return. The Edison Electric Institute is forecasting that 26.4 million EVs will be on U.S. roads in 2030. Considering most EV charging is done at home, apartment residents need any solution that they can get. Stay tuned for my opinion on apartment charging. Well, that didn't take long. It's opinion time. To me, the solution of a company that specializes in deployment to seek investment only to sell it back to the residents of an apartment, meaning the capability to charge, I really see this as one option, but not really a fix for many or maybe most apartment residents. I don't know, maybe I'm being skeptical. Electric cars are not the perfect plug-and-play solution for gas-powered vehicles for every single use case. I think they will at some point. But one of those obstacles is charging in apartment buildings. Efforts are being made. Some states like New York and California have allowed multi-unit property residents to install EV charging stations, but they're paid by the renter themselves. These are called the right to charge laws. I personally find it rather disingenuine to bring up a language of the Constitution as if it were held in the same esteem as the right to vote or the right to free speech, but that's aside from the point. According to my crystal ball, I think that nearly all apartment dwellers will also, by necessity, be gas drivers, really as long as they can. If apartment buildings won't pay for it, and charging companies won't pay for it, does it really stand a reason that the residents are going to pay for it? Especially if they don't even own the property? I mean, what happens when they move out? Can the first resident and charger buyer sell it? I mean, we already know that the building owner is not going to pay for it. If the new renter coming in doesn't want to pay for the total install that has already occurred, all they got to do is just say no. 
Even if they actually want it, they could just take out the old unit and install their own with the existing electrical equipment and subvert the majority of the installation cost. I don't know, maybe there's more to this program that I don't understand, but at first glance it just looks like a hot potato that nobody wants to carry. In today's community comment found on YouTube, Frosty Flake says, thanks for the reporting. Well, thank you very much, Frosty Flake, and welcome to the channel. And thanks for watching Quick Charge by Electrek. We also have an audio version on your favorite podcast player. I'm Mikey G, and I hope you have a great day.